and uh, <clears throat> very early in the morning, like right now, early, the chief priests with elders and teachers of the law in, in, in the whole Sanhedrin reached the decision. <clears throat> so this, this is the morning that Jesus was to be uh, brought in to give his life for us. I mean, it's a critical morning. And this is the only time in the scripture where the whole Sanhedrin reached a decision. The Sanhedrin is all divided. It's made out of Pharisees and Sadducees. And, uh, and they were people that were very strict on the law and legalism. You know, legalism means you, if you do this, you get that. If you are be good, you'll be saved, okay? And, and they were full of things, and so uh, very early means like 6 o'clock in the morning when the sun was not up. And the elders mean the older people that, are, that, that helped the, the Sanhedrin. The teachers of the law are people who taught the law all the time, in the Pharisees and in the Sadducees, which made the Sanhedrin. So it's a, it's, a, it's a group united, okay? They reached the decision. They bound Jesus. So Jesus was unbounded before that. The only way you are going to, the only way you can be bound, hands behind you, is when you, they, they reach a decision, okay? So there's got to be a decision of guilt, like it is in here on, uh, in jail, you know, uh, when, uh, when that young man at the court here in, in Macon, uh, in uh, Watkinsville, uh, reached, uh, they reached a decision that he was sentenced. Then the soldier came in and bound his hands right in front of him, okay? And it's a bad feeling, real bad feeling. That means you, you lost all your freedoms, you lost all your desire to do anything, you cannot decide about yourself, you are now bound strict into a rule game, you are, you, you go to jail, the lights are going to be on all night, there's no pillows, you, you can put your, the socks on top of your head on, or eyes, or you can turn around, but there's light on you 24-7. There's a camera on you 24-7. And you are, uh, you sleep with socks, shorts, t-shirt, and in the morning, you get up, and it, it, it affects your whole life, okay? Uh, I just came out of Cuba where every freedom that we think is, it's not ours, uh, it's been taken away from us, from them. Every freedom you know, I mean, every day, you cannot own, own land, your car cannot be bought uh, from companies, it has to be buy, bought by people. Um, uh, three tickets and you're out. Uh, you have to buy food here. You have, I mean, there's no freedom. When you step into the United States, you know, there's a freedom. I mean, you just, you know, gosh, I could go to the bathroom and pee on the floor if I have to. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm going to smell it myself too. But, I, but I, I'm free, okay? And so this is the moment when Jesus lost his total freedom. So meaning that they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate was the uh, governor of the province of Judea, and he is to sentence. Uh, he is to be, he's the one who sentenced Jesus. Are you the kings of the Jews? Asked Pilate. Why? Because, you see, the Jews were under occupation of, for, of, of the Romans. As you know, the Romans actually did with the Jews in the year 70, after Christ. Seventy years after Christ, the, Jew, the Romans destroyed the temple, burned everything, and killed all the Jews. And so at this point here, um, he's just saying, you're the guy in charge of the Jews because you're not a Roman king, but you, you are a Jew king. 
I mean, you're telling me you're the king of the Jews, okay? And, and really, the messianic title of Jesus is to be the king, king of the world. It's a little different, you know. So the chief priests accused him of many things. And of course, you know, because he responded, yes, it is as you say. In other words, I am the king of the Jews. And there's no way for Jesus not to say he's not, because he is the one who, who, who was, was the son of God, sent to, to set the Jews first free, and then the Gentiles. It was the plan of God. for. So he couldn't lie. I, I'm, I'm the one. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm the one. And so the chief priests began to just cuss him, accuse him of anything. He's, he, he, he's not. He's not that. He's not that. So again, Pilate asked him, are you going to answer? Answer meaning that there is a time between the accusation of the Jews, the, the chief priests, that is at least 15, 20, 30 minutes. And these guys are just, you know, I mean, he says that, he says that, he says that, and it's not, it's not, the law says not, not, and not, and not, and he's this, and he's that, and he's that, and he's no good, and he's no good. And Jesus is just saying, you know, it doesn't matter what you say, I'm going to be quiet. I'm not going to answer. And so Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Are you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. In other words, make a defense here, okay? Because when you're accused of something, you don't want to say, no, I want to, wait a minute now. That's not the way it is. Okay, okay. And Jesus did not answer. And that confirms that, that, that those, uh, uh, there's a scripture that Romans, Paul says, that those whom God, those whom God judge, he will justify. Do, those whom God call, he will justify. And so yeah, those whom God calls, he will justify. What simply means this, if God calls you to do what you do for him, he justifies you. You don't have to answer. I was at a, a meeting of pastors and and more, they were just have it. let me have it. I heard that he speak in tongues. I heard that he puts hand on people to heal, and he says in the name of Jesus. That's not right. I've seen him baptizing people. That's not right. Okay, all kinds of things. Because in the Methodist Church, you cannot baptize uh, twice. You baptize children. Okay. And I was baptizing anybody who showed up. <laughs> I mean, you got a hand, I'm going to get you baptized. So I'm baptizing them. And these are people who are unsaved or, you know, just bound up. Or I'm just throwing the water on them. Who cares? <laughs> and they were real mad, okay, real mad. I mean, they were angry, upset and angry. And a funny thing, I want to say something. And I wanted to say something, but I couldn't say it because I just, I just, I just didn't have any word to say. I began to cry, I remember that, like, you know, you all guys, you're so mean, you know. you mean, you're just a bunch of rattlesnakes, you mean. I heard about you people, you really mean, aren't you? You love this, don't you, you know, you mean. You're not Christians, you're, you're a bunch of redneck. Oh, Mr. Baumfram, yes, they are, you know they are. These are not preachers, these are just people who want a job like that. <laughs> Okay, I mean, that was it. A couple of them left. <laughs> Jesus made no reply, okay? He didn't say a word. He said, and, and Pilate was amazed. I mean, you know, you really can take, you can take all this, you know. Now, it was the custom of, uh, at the feast to release, and this is the feast of the Passover, okay? To release a prisoner whom the people requested. So the people requested, you know, let them go, let them go, let them go. And so, and so the Jews pay tax. The Romans suck them out of every penny they had. And the Romans want peace and money this way. And you can just, you know, live here. We want the money, we want the land, we want the profit. Okay, tax, 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 okay? And all of that. And so, you want a prisoner? Yeah, pay tax. Here's a prisoner. A man called Barabbas, who had committed murder in the uprising. And this is, he's referring in the uprising because this is the year 33. 
And it's about the time when Jesus is crucified and his ministry ended that the uprisings against the Romans begun. Just amazing the amount of war upon war upon war upon the Romans. The Jews were overwhelming, getting fed up with the Roman law and the Roman Empire, and they couldn't take it anymore. So you have from 33 to 40, and that's seven years, then you have, you have uh, uh, to 50, you have uh, another 10 uh, plus another 20, so 33, 37 years before it all exploded. But there were all kinds of uprisings. If you look at the history of Israel, I mean, there were so many uprisings where the Jews uh, 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 fled. This time, we're going to go to a place called Uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's a, it's a mountain on the south side of the Dead Sea. It's very high, and they, the Jews will uh, put themselves in there, uh, Masada, and they, a thousand of them com uh, committed genocide. They killed themselves instead of submitting themselves to the Romans because the Romans made a ramp and got there, and, and uh, we're going to go up and... Herod had a big, big palace there and all that, so we're going we're gonna to see that. So the uprisings were many, and this is one of the uprisings. He killed somebody. I mean, talking about Barabbas now, Barabbas. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Okay? So the crowd said to, 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 to Pilate, can you do again? Can you repeat what you did? I mean, you, every time you, you give us one, how about, how about if you, uh, you know, you got to do this now, okay? Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Now, this is very important because what happens here is that the decision to, to crucify Jesus had to be also a decision reached by the whole community. Now, first time... The Sanhedrin reached out a decision that was complete and in unison. Everybody agreed. And now, to confirm Scripture, Jesus had to have the same. It had to be a major decision by everybody involved, okay? And this is, this is very important. Do you want me to release the, to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate. No, it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. Knowing that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. Meaning, now Pilate began to make a game between envy and control. He has Jesus. They brought him in, brought Jesus in. And so, um, where am I? No, it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus meaning that the, Jesus was handed over by the chief priests because they envy him. What, what does it mean, envy? Envy is when you have, I don't have. You do miracles, I don't do miracles. You, you set the, the, the blind and the lame free, I can't do it. You understand? They couldn't take it. They couldn't take it. So envy is an expression of the root of unforgiveness, that goes along with extended grief, extended grief, envy, and strife. These are the three legs that are attached to unforgiveness. If you find somebody with unforgiveness, they have these three attached to it. Why? Because the three are expressions of, 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 of unforgiveness. Why extended grief? Somebody, is die, somebody dies and you have a problem with it, you carry it with you, and it's, po it's impossible to, to bury that person. And uh, extended grief is one of the major problems in our churches. I mean, I mean, when I'm bored to death and I can't do nothing in the pulpit, I just invite people who lost relatives who can't forgive them. It fills the sanctuary, okay? Because they hate John. John passed away and left me with no insurance, and he took, and he died on the wrong time, and he, okay, they hate that time. Extended grief. Envy is when you want what somebody has. I mean, you hate them because they have something you don't have, okay? And strife is this, uh, this disagreement that never settle, okay? 
All those three things are under this area of, of, of unforgiveness. It's a, it's a study we do on roots. And uh, how did I get that? I got that out of, uh, I did a sample of a telephone book of Athens. And if you know how to do a sample of a telephone book, you, you get a crew of 10, 15 people, you pay them $10 an hour, and you call every third, every fourth, every tenth of the same number. Let's say you have 1,000. You call every third, every fourth, every tenth of the first thousand. Every, four, every, every third, every fourth of the tenth of the, of the, tenth of the, of the second thousand, okay? And so I conducted that research. I think I lived in Athens or I was doing a master's degree. I needed some type of a thing. And out of the research, I found out, and there's a margin of error of 5%, 5 or less percent. By the way, I have that material somewhere where we can conduct a research, you know. I mean, it's very simple. It, it is very accurate. This is what all these companies does, but they do with numbers and in the millions, you know, to have more accuracy. But I, I did uh, uh, for... Um, I think it was about 20,000 people or 30,000 people, something like that. And what I found out was that there's more strife than anything else, disagreement between people, uh, less uh, envy, but more strife, more, more disagreement, okay? And, 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 uh, and so... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. More envy than anything else. More than extended grief, envy. More, more, more than extended grief and strife. Envy, envy. Envy is, is you want what somebody has, okay? And so the chief priests were doing that to Jesus in front of Pilate. Are you hearing this? You hearing this? And uh, so uh, Noah was out of envy uh, that Jesus had handed over to him. So, so Pilate used the envy and pointed to Jesus. You know, since you guys hate him, would you like him released? Okay. Now, I want you to know now that the chief priests stirred the crowd to have Pilate released Bar Barabbas itself it, instead. The chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. So what does that mean? <clears throat> I'm not saying that that's because they did this the way it is today. But I tell you this, I'm 68 years old. And I have lived within the church for 68 years old. And there's more condemnation coming to me from preachers than anybody else. I mean, I, I can make a preacher mad in 15 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> and you wonder why. You know, you wonder why. Why is it that preachers get mad? <clears throat> it's because of envy. You see, envy. I mean, everything you say, I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like the way you do this. I don't like that. I don't agree with that and that. And, and how can you, how come you're successful? It is normal, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. It's normal. It's really normal. It's a, it's, a, it's a way of life, and it's the way it is. And when you find some preacher or a friend that becomes your friend, and then uh, that envy is not there, okay? But it's there, it's there, period, okay? It's there, period. Why? Because most preachers know about a lot, about a lot of things, you understand? And... And that revelation from God to each of us that serve the Lord is different. A call is different, okay? And we have a heart to do the right thing. So there's a lot of disagreement between preachers. It's normal. I mean, that's the way it is. I've never seen a preacher love, love the other one uh, freely. <laughs> I've never, see, never seen a preacher kiss the other and say, you're my brother. Most of it is pretty false. And, well, and, and there's a lot of fellowship in there, and there's a lot of truth in there. And I have a lot of friends, you know, that are preachers, and I love them, and they love me. But you have to agree that um, preachers don't like each other, okay? And so if there's a healing that God needs to do is to, is to, is to love the preachers and to make them love each other and to, and to do that. If I, if I was a bishop, I would require that you have to kiss a preacher every day in order to be in ministry, Okay? 
It's not going to happen. Okay. So, so, so the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas. So the chief priest went around, get Barabbas, get Barabbas, get Barabbas, kill Jesus, crucify Jesus, get Barabbas out. Get Barabbas. So, so this is instigated by the religious people. See, this is very, it's very interesting. But at times I like bar people, then I like preachers. Mm -hmm. Then I like Christians. You know, have a good time. Sometimes I go to a bar and drink a beer just to get sane. <laughs> just to talk to the, you know, they're very nice people in, in bars. You know that? They talk, they're friendly, they're not after you. Yeah, no, I got a piece of you, you understand? And I, they're lost, but they're friendly, okay? And, and so you have to know your place within the kingdom. You have to be patient. You have to forgive. You ha I spend a lot of time worrying about what the people thought of me. And today, don't care, okay? That's really how I feel. Why? Don't care. Why? Because I haven't been called to save preachers. I've been called to help people. I've been called to help others, but I'm not going to serve preachers. I'm not going to serve anybody. I respect my leaders, and I am committed to do what they tell me to do, and I pray for them and bless them, and I humble myself before them, and they love me. You understand? And so you have to decide yourself if you're going to love me or accept the word that I give you, because I don't care if you like me. You know, I'm not a popsicle for you to lick. I want you to know if you love the Lord, okay? And I'll help you to love the Lord and, and, not, and not to have to be put me on a, on a pedestal. Very interesting Bible study today. Okay, for three of you that are listening. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. What shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews, Pilate asked. So Pilate is really trying to work this out, you know. He working, he's working Jesus into the gallows. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shout all the louder, crucify him, crucify him. The chief priests caused this. By the way, I want to say this also. In the last 20 years, I had more love from my leaders love from, from them more than any other time in my life. I've had men of God that blessed me in the Methodist church, and I'm in love and peace with them in a way that I don't understand. It's really godly. And I want to say this. It might be that in the past I was the one who was hard to get, get, get around, and I was too much. I'm still too much. <laughs> well, that's my problem. Amen? But I'm in peace with them. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Peter released Barabbas to them. Pilate released Barabbas to them. Pilate said, you go so they can quiet down. Well, he's the one who stirred the crowd in the first place. You see the game Pilate's doing? He, the chief priest instigated the crowd. The, he brought Jesus to be the one... You know, a bunch of people in jail. Why not to get 15 murders down there in jail to, be, to replace uh, uh, Barabbas or, or, or do something else, okay? But Jesus become the focal point. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. You know what flog means? Flog means you are tied to a pole. They take a, a, a big, big uh, whip that in the end has... Little, uh, little uh, things that look like this, okay? Small little ones like this embedded into the, into the leather. So when it hits, it goes in to come out. It has to bring out something. You understand? And it's the end of the sip. It's, it's, it's a long whip made out of a leather. In the end, in Israel, there's one there. There's four or five little pieces, okay? And the little pieces are made about this big the little claws, and it goes in, it takes a piece out. So by the time they flogged Jesus, the back, his back was from here all the way here and around, bloody and full of holes. 
And then they hand him over to be crucified. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your blood that has been shed on the cross for us. We thank you, Lord, that you bled and every drop of it was to save my soul, to save the soul of Allison and Rachel and Jessica and John and Cindy and, and Betty and Mary Lucy, our staff. God, you, through your son, Lord God, you made an offering all the way to the cross in exchange for forgiveness of our sins. And we're just so grateful to you for that. We thank you, Lord, for that, that you bless us. And we ask this morning that you watch over us and care for us and forgive our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. Amen? Bye-bye. Okay.